Sometimes you only have an hour or so to hit up the game, and for such occasions, solo salvagers might not want to go after the biggest of contracts. But an hour is still plenty of time to hoover up a Valkyrie salvage with the Vulture. I'm Forrester, and this video takes an hour out with the Drake Vulture to salvage a complete Valkyrie, with the end result being a profit of around 90,000 Alpha UEC. To shorten the video a little bit, some parts have been sped up, just to bring this gameplay video into a more digestible format. And we start out looking for a contract to salvage. There are plenty of salvage claims to go through, usually, depending on how much time I'll have, I'll go down the entire list just looking down at the location for something close to where I am. In this case, that Valkyrie there looks tempting. And I see nothing better, so we'll take the Valkyrie contract. The total cost here of 20,000 Alpha UEC, we will more than make that up with the contract. I'll speed up the footage, the first thing that I will do is spawn in the Cutlass. The Cutlass tends to be my go-to support ship for the Vulture, because it's got an ample sized cargo bay. Many of you commented on the last gameplay video that I left the weapons on the target, as well as cargo in the cargo bay, so of late I've been starting to take out the Cutlass Black so that I can fit not just the salvage materials, but also the weapons and the cargo from the cargo bay. For a claim of this sort of size, a Valkyrie sort of size, it would come close to all fitting in the Vulture, but there'd be a lot of jiggery-pokery to get everything to fit, and that's at a time when things are potentially bouncing around, so sometimes the extra space afforded by the Cutlass Black can be helpful. So at this point here, I'm just positioning the Cutlass Black so that I'll be able to load things into the rear cargo bay. To do this from first person view, all you need to do is select the target, face it, and then rotate around a little way until the target shows directly at the top or the bottom of the screen, and that should mean when you open the doors, it's right behind you. Perfect. This is intentional, so to get back to bring the Vulture out, a quick backspace should do the trick, and we'll spawn right back at Mike L1, where we set our spawn point before departing. Through this method, it's possible to have both the Vulture and your ferry ship, in this case the uh, Cutlass Black, both by your salvage target. For some of the larger salvage ships, like the Hammerhead or the Starfarer, you'll need something more than just the Vulture to be able to carry the stuff back, and so this is my preferred method of getting everything in the right place at the right time to fit all that glorious salvage in. So, as we're going to be starting to strip weapons and salvage and take the cargo out, I've equipped my armour, undersuit, as well as my handy little tractor beam tool before heading back to the mining claim. I should probably say salvage claim rather than mining claim. So at this point we're in pretty close, what we're going to do is just park the Vulture off to one side and hop out with the tractor beam to strip the weapons from the ship. I have parked plenty of distance away, so that should give me plenty of space that I'm not going to obstruct anything on the way in. And then of course part of this is remembering where all the weapons are on the Valkyrie, which has surprisingly a lot. So at this point I'm going to head back to the Cutlass Black and just reverse up a little way just that I don't have quite so far for the tractor beam to go. Now 
no shortage of EVA gameplay for the true salvagers who would want to harvest everything on a ship. Back into the cockpit of the Cutlass Black, you'll notice I've switched the engines off. I tend to find that that often is just a good habit to get into for, for these sort of things. I'm going to spin the ship around and do exactly what I did last time, which is face the Valkyrie. Close the distance so that the cockpit is pretty much lined up with where I want to be. I'll rotate so that I'm in the same orientation as the Valk. And that feels close enough. I'm still going to need to be able to get the Vulture in to do the work. And then I'll do a spin on the axis. Target the Valkyrie. I can see on the left of the screen there, it's got the target indication marker. Let's flick to the right. And then I'm just moving the rudder to balance that to try and get that as close to the middle as I can. Small adjustments. There we go, that'll do. Engine off hop out the chair and hopefully that will be close enough aligned that I've essentially aligned the back cargo bay of the Cutlass with the back of the Valk. Perfect. Well, maybe not perfect, but pretty close. Good enough, I think. So the first thing we'll do is search on board for cargo. Sometimes for these older ships where there's not a button, it can be a bit tricky getting the door open option when you're in EVA. Anybody that's got any top tips around this, I would love to hear them. I can just float around the ship until it highlights. So the obvious thing about um, bringing this cargo out is you can potentially sell the cargo as part of your salvage haul. It can add a nice little amount, but you do need to be careful because sometimes the cargo aboard is not, um, not strictly legitimate which might be fine for some of you, but for a lawful good player like me, it's not the ideal. That said, these two boxes happen to be just fine. I don't know if there's a way to tell if they're fine before you load them aboard your ship. Again, if anybody knows that, I would love to read about it in the comments. I kind of just look at the box and hope, I suppose. Now, at this point, I wasn't sure whether the door guns on the Valk are sufficient to be removed. I think they're part of the, the fixed part of the ship, so I'm going to assume that they can't be removed. So instead, we'll hop out, perform some gymnastics with our legs, and then start to pick up these weapons. There's the first. So at this point, I'm just flinging everything onto the back of the Cutlass. Once everything is aboard, then I'll hop in and arrange things a little better. But stage one of this, I've got an empty Cutlass, so I just lift everything off and then put it all aboard and then worry about sorting it out. This is being a slightly difficult because I have to remove it sideways. I have to like change my orientation, but that's fine. Even with saying you know trying to keep this run to an hour, that's still plenty of time for a, a ship of this size. The other advantage of these claims, obviously, is that they're fairly close to the stations. So in this case, I was on Mike L1. I was looking for a salvage contract near Mike L1. So I was right nearby. Don't have far to go. Don't even need to go into quantum travel to bring the next ship in. Which is ideal. Use little size 2 badges from the nose. The other good thing, I think, about some of these generic armaments the less specialised ones or the less rare ones is you can often find places to sell them a bit easier. So like for these badgers, they'll just go to New Babbage 
and I can sell the RMC a new Babbage and it's ideal. Don't have to go far. Right, quick look around. I don't think I've missed anything. We'll soon find out. Once you start circling the ship, it becomes obvious if you have missed something. Hop on board. And then what I'll do is I'll just neaten these up a little bit. I think I'll leave that right hand section there for the weapons. And I'll put the cargo onto the cargo grid down the middle of the ship slash left hand side of the ship. Now, sometimes these can collide with each other, which can make for some bouncy slash explodey situation. So um, just be aware when you're stacking weapons like this, you might not get the the efficiency that you get out of the space that you would if you had something else in there. Also just use the rotation tool on the tractor beam to try and line things up a little bit. There we go, a little badger. All aboard, a little bounce, that's fine. So, that done. I'm going to temporarily close up that bay and head back to the vulture. In this instance, I've closed the bay just because I've got things in there, and in theory, there's nothing that would stop somebody from turning up here and grabbing the stuff. I mean, I'd probably hear them coming, I'd probably see them once I'm in the ship on the radar, but I suppose it's just good security to have the door shut, isn't it? So, with the cargo removed and the weapons removed, it's back to the vulture, hopping into the seat. And then we'll start salvaging the hull. So what I've done here, I'll start by just showing the first couple of boxes and then I'll speed up the rest of the footage after that. So you can kind of see what I'm doing, but then you're not going to literally sit here for the full hour and watch me claim. You'll get to see different parts of this. I do still like using the Abrade Scraper module, and many of you commented last time about, hey, you should just use the gimbals rather than moving the entire ship. Um, for some reason, I think it's to do with my control loadout and the way that I've got my eye tracker set up. That just doesn't work for me. If I press G for gimbal mode, just nothing moves at all. I don't know whether it's the eye tracker, I don't know whether it's because I've got some custom look controls set for when I try and do some cinematic shots but there's something about my control setup that just means gimbal mode is sadly not an option for me. So in case you're watching this thinking this is awfully tedious moving the nose around, there's an easier way to do it. Uh, there may well be, but not with my control setup. So there's the first box. Just let that eject through from the, the filler station. And we'll continue to the second box. It's always nice when you're freshly salvaging a ship, like the first couple of runs around. You just get such high amount of materials. Those first couple of boxes seem to come off the train so fast. And there's that very satisfying orange glow as the hull in front of you disintegrates. Fantastic. So I mentioned this in my review of the Vulture, it is a shame that the headlights aren't brighter. You can see here that it's not the worst thing to follow what's happening, but with a stronger set of headlights it will be far easier to know what's still to be salvaged and what's already done. Now when you're in the sun that's fine, but given that most people will do a full 360 of their salvage target as they're working on it, you are always going to have some element that is inadequately lit. At least the orange disintegration kind of helps to give a bit of a 
a bit of a clue. So here we are, I'm watching that cargo filler on the top left creep its way up to the next SCU. Then once that second cube is out, we'll hop down and move things around. There we are, full. You might have noticed um, I actually stopped the, the laser a split second before the box filled up. And that's because it's kind of got a slight latency on processing the materials, so in case you wonder why that happened. So first box, move it to the back onto the cargo grid, eject the second box. And this is like the tetris -y type of gameplay for Star Citizen. Some people hate it. I, I don't mind it so much. It can get a bit tedious if you've got a really big target like the Starfarer or the Hammerhead, but I don't know, I find it quite relaxing, something to break up the tedium a little bit. I know that's not a widely popular belief though, so if you find it boring or tedious, that's absolutely fine as well. So I'm going to speed up the footage here as I continue to scrape away at this hole. Actually quite satisfying watching that speeding up. Makes it seem like I'm very efficient. Maybe, maybe you disagree. <laughs> actually been a, a while since I've flown a Valkyrie. It used to be many years ago, it used to be one of my pledge ships. I had the orange and white one. Ended up melting that though in favour of something bigger. Alright, so at this point I've noticed at the top of the ship I've actually left on the central turret, I've left two weapons aboard. So I'm going to remove those, send them back to the Cutlass. And they're Panthers, so they're not the smallest of weapons. They're probably worth over a thousand Alpha UEC each, so that's two thousand Alpha UEC. Maybe a little more that's just left on the top of the ship, so quite happy to take those to the Cutlass. Grab these, throw them aboard. There you are, there's an example of the jumping that can happen. Thankfully, nobody was hurt, but that shows you um, how bouncy things can be. I was a little bit too aggressive with throwing down that weapon on top of the others. So I think at this point what I'll do, I'll juggle some things around a little bit. I, I basically just want to make sure these are kind of all fairly well aligned. I'm going to leave the entire right hand side of this, this area of the cutlass just for these weapons to sit in so they can spread out a little bit. But I want to keep them from interfering with the cargo grid where I'm going to be putting the scrap. I would guess from, from experience of the different sort of sizes of ships, for the for the Valk, I'm expecting probably 12, 12 boxes of scrap, plus these two cargo boxes here from the back. So there's plenty of space in the Cutlass for that. Yeah, I'm just making sure nothing has flown out into the into the Valk. Looks okay. Now at this point, I've actually left the door of the Cutlass Black open. You remember I said earlier, better to have the door shut and then if somebody shows up, you know, you're able to deal with what's going on. At this point, I've got four boxes of scrap on my Vulture. And so I'm thinking, actually, if something happens, I'd probably rather run away with the Vulture than the Cutlass Black. So I wouldn't be 
going for that stuff anyway. So I'm happy to leave it there. I'm going to be in the Vulture until this is over, so I'll hear somebody approaching and get pinged on radar. So I'm taking the risk. Rightly or wrongly, I'm taking the risk. So here, this is obviously sped up footage of scraping the hull, moving the cargo boxes, continuing to scrape the hull. I've started doing a lot more salvage now. Um, mining is still great. I like mining, so I still do take out my prospector, take out my rock, have a good time with that. But the salvage is... I don't know, it's a bit different. Like, the mining, you have to go out and hope that you find things that are suitable and find things that are good and then organise the refining. The salvage is much more of a, I don't want to say a guaranteed income, but it's a more, you you know that you're going to a salvage claim if you pick one up, so you're not worried about finding things. There's less random chance involved about whether there will be something there or whether you'll spend 15, 20 minutes looking for something. And that can sometimes be a detraction from the mining experience. If you're spending a long time looking for a rock, Sometimes that can be frustrating, so. Whereas the salvage, it's a more consistent experience. That's the word I'm looking for. It's more consistent. Boxes are full. You can see the back of that vulture is filling up nicely at this point. And actually that vehicle hull is going down. This is the other good thing about some of these smaller ships is that the the hull isn't quite so big so it's much easier to try and grab everything so at this point here most of the hull is done and i'm literally going in trying to get components to zero percent i can see on the the left hand side the cargo is so close to one scu so i'm just hovering that salvage laser around everywhere just to try and get that last bit to pump out one more box. So close. You see, desperately just trying to get that last little bit. Not point nine eight. Now usually I, I would not recommend like when you get to like zero percent hull here looking for these scraps, it's usually not worth it. But because I was so close to filling the crate up, I was determined. 0.99. I was absolutely determined that I get the next box. Especially if you keep taking your vulture out, it may not be as necessary. Of course, the drawback to this method is you'll have to fly back to the ship in order to claim it, because I'll be flying the Cutlass Black to sell up. So here I'm just going to orient the ship a little bit. I almost do all of my flying in first person. You saw me briefly enter into third person in there, if you're wondering why that was. I wanted, to, <laughs> I wanted a screenshot for this video to use for the thumbnail and the, uh, the third person screenshots look much, much better. So there we are. Cargo box loaded to the grid. Going to head over to the cutlass and then orient the cutlass so that it's facing the optimal direction to be able to... I've just noticed that there's a, a wandering badger there. And the reason I'm doing it this way rather than parking behind the cutlass and aligning is because I've already aligned the cutlass to the Valkyrie. So there isn't a lot of room behind the ship to manoeuvre the vulture in there. And of course, if you nudge the ship, it starts rolling around and it becomes difficult. So just thought 
I'll park here, jump aboard, and then line up separately. Plus, you'll get to see what I was talking about before, about how I target the ship and then just move everything so that it lines up. So this is how I do it in first person, if you're like me and you quite like the, the first person piloting experience. So go nose to tail, ready for the cargo bay. There we are, nose to tail. Use the rudder, spin around, target the ship. I can see the arrow has appeared on the left of the screen, that little blue arrow. Wait for that to reach the top or the bottom, it's reached the top in this stage. And then just tweaking very slight inputs until it's more or less centred. And that should tell me it's pretty much directly behind me. Engine off, hop out, inspect your handiwork. There you are, aligned, not bad. Yeah, I've got this weird thing where it's trying to snap these to the cargo grid before they're before they're fully aboard. But I want to load from the load from the back. And this is the this is the Star Citizen Tetris experience that isn't universally popular. I don't mind it. The The advantage here is that the vulture there was what I would call conventionally full. So, as I discussed in my review of the vulture, it is possible to get a lot of boxes in the back of that ship, but not on the cargo grid. I think somebody in the YouTube comments was saying that they'd got 25 boxes in there. Um, but in terms of what is supposed to fit, it's um, significantly below that. But this vulture was pretty much full from that Valkyrie in terms of the cargo grid storage, so I'm not really that worried about things knocking into each other or bashing or wobbling or jittering or exploding. It's a fairly neat affair. And I guess that suggests that perhaps the Valkyrie was the sort of size of ship that was designed for the Vulture. And maybe the Hammerhead and Starfarer were expected to be more reclaimer salvage pieces. That said, if you if you do this sort of a method where you bring the Cutlass Black along with you, you can absolutely fit all of the salvage from those big dogs under the Cutlass Black. I find for the Starfarer, for example, it is somewhere in the region of just below 50 boxes. So that would go on uh, Cutlass Black. Oh, last box. I think it's the last box. I'm gonna hop out and quickly check that there's nothing else there. No, happy with that. So, close the door, we'll go sell up. So I was at Mike L1, I'm going to head to Microtech and then New Babbage to sell up. The advantage of Microtech is a few different things. So the trade console will pretty much buy your RMC, don't need to worry about that. The center mass shop will buy a lot of weapons, including the badges that we've got on here. I think badges and panthers. And if you park down by the commons, you don't have to go all the way to the spaceport and then use the tram and this, that and the other. You can just park on the lake right by the commons and then you're straight into where you're going to be selling up. So especially for a session like this where, you know, limited to an hour, that time, that extra time of not having to get the public transport is, is a big help. And as you can see here, a few other people share that idea of parking by the lake and walking up, so it's not just me. Is this a 
a vulture that met an unfortunate fate parked up there. I wonder if that's what all those crates are from that vulture. Engine off as I've landed. Do recommend that as a good practice. And this is definitely going to be a situation where I close the door after leaving. Really don't want random people hopping aboard. Walking past what looks to be a freelancer Max. Which is nice. I've been meaning to do a fresh review of the Freelancer and the Freelancer Max. It's been a long time since I reviewed those ships. Passing on our right, a vulture that met an unfortunate end. I'm sure there's a story behind that. And then passing in front of the slow walking ice warrior. Underneath another cutlass who's parked very well <laughs> for easy access to new Babbage Commons. And then in through the surface entrance. Left Alt and X for X-Ray to just do a quick wipe of the visor, clean off some of that snow and ice. And then up the elevator to the commons. Now the other advantage of hopping by the commons is it's a good place to be able to stop for a little bit of food and drink as well on the way, so if your thirst meter or hunger meter is ready for it by now, there are plenty of reputable establishments to satisfy those needs. So the first thing that I'll do is head to sell up the cargo. I find the weapons can be a little bit more volatile, so I don't know, maybe this is just me, but I, I feel safer selling the cargo first. I don't think I've ever had any problems with this, but I don't know, it just feels like the right thing. So remembering, I spent 20,000 Alpha UEC on the contract. Inside the cargo bay, those two boxes were one SCU of Taranite, 7.5k, one SCU of gold, 7.5k. So that's 15k of the 20k price just in the two boxes at the back. Eighty-five K there for the recycled materials. So it was fifteen K for the cargo, eighty-five K. You take the twenty K off that, we're eighty K up at the moment as we go to Centre Mass to sell the weapons. Then selling these off, the badges are 840 a piece. The Panthers are a little more than I expected at 1.4k a piece. So between two badges and six Panthers, that's another 10k or so. So that overall is 110k made minus 20k spent, so 90k profit in the hour. And that's quite a relaxing way to do it. So, I hope you enjoyed this gameplay video of the Vulture salvaging a Valkyrie. If you did, please press that like button, and if you're not already subscribed, that might not hurt as well. Otherwise, and as always, thank you for watching.